Okay, so now that we've discussed sets and maps, we have everything that we need to move on to algebraic structures. So we've already seen that a set is a fairly boring object. It's just a collection of elements, and all that it tells us is whether or not an element is in the set. So what we can do now is we can give this set additional structure by defining what is known as an operation that we can perform on the elements of that set. So I'm going to call this operation circle and w what actually is it? Well it's a map from the set and then it could be into another set but I'm just going to let it go into the same set. So <clears throat> this map could be anything you like but depending on how you define this map taken together with the set the whole thing defines what is known as an algebraic structure. So this map, it will come with a list of rules which tells you how you can map different elements to other elements. And it's the set taken along with this operation and the set of rules that this operation must satisfy, that is what defines you an algebraic structure. So what would an example of this operation be? Well, we usually deal with what are called binary operations. A binary operation simply takes one element from x and another element from x and returns a third element. So I'll make this concrete by providing you with an example. An algebraic structure you may have heard of before is that of a group. So a group, I'll give it the name G, is simply a set combined with an operation which we call composition. Now this composition operation or map simply takes two elements from the group so I'm going to call this G little g1 and little g2 and this composition map maps those two elements to third element which is in the group. And that's the key point. This is in fact one of the so-called axioms or rules that this composition operation must satisfy known as the closure axiom. So if you take two group elements and you compose them, essentially you map them, they're always mapped to a third element which is in the group. Okay so I'll just write down the other axioms, we're not going to need to worry too much about them. So associativity states that if you compose one element with So the neutral axiom states that there exists a particular element in the group such that when you compose that element with any other group element you just are returned the same group element. And then finally we have inverse which states that for all the group elements in the group there exists another element which we call the inverse of that group element such that when you compose the group element with its inverse you just are returned to the neutral element. So the set G taken together with the operation circle which follows these rules that I've written here all together define a group. So now we come to a key observation. I haven't told you anything about what the set G is or what its elements are they can be anything, they can be abstract. So long as its elements satisfy these rules under the composition operation, they're a group. So I haven't even told you what this composition operation is either. You don't know how to compose two group elements, but as long as whenever you do that, they follow these rules, then it's a group. So if you successfully find a set G that you can prove satisfies this set of rules under some composition operation then voila you have found yourself a group or as we say a representation of a group. So representation is a tangible set that you can give to me and show me that all of its elements behave correctly under a composition operation which you define.
The composition operation could be multiplication and the group elements numbers, or they could be matrices and the composition operation is matrix multiplication. It doesn't matter so long as they follow these rules, therefore they're a group.